Hi there, it's Gabrielle Nicolay from Speech Kids. I'm a speech language pathologist, also called a speech therapist. Uh, and here at Speech Kids, we teach little kids to talk and we help parents understand their little kids. Um, and today we're gonna to be talking about preschools and how to, um, how to choose them when to know that your child is ready. Um, I will be taking questions for the next uh, little bit here. And so if you are um, having a burning preschool related question, um, we're gonna dive into those today. Um, and I've got some stuff, um, I've got some questions already written down from people, but um, so I'll be referring to those. But if you've got something that you want to, um, if you wanna add, then definitely type that in the chat and I'm, I'm not exactly sure that I can see people, um, but hopefully that will come through. Okay, um, and so the first thing I wanna say about this is um, it's preschool. <laughs> it's not that serious for most kids. Um, so that being said, there are some kids for whom it will be serious and so, um, if you've got a child where um, where you send them and who you put them with, um, if you've got a child who maybe is a little bit more sensitive or you've got a child who certainly you know has any kind of developmental um, delay or disorder going on, um, somebody that you need to think about a little bit more because their needs are different from some other kids, um, then you're gonna be really selective about what preschool you send your kiddo to. And so um, none of the programs that I'm gonna describe that we'll talk about today are bad. Um, that's not it. Um, and there are two other videos that you can refer to about this, but the really important thing is, is it a good fit for your child? Is it right for your kiddo? Um, and so there are kids for whom any model will be fine. And that's why I say it's not that serious, right? It's preschool. Um, it's meant to be fun. It's meant to be pleasant. It's meant to be uh, a good thing. Um, but there are kids for whom, like, they'll go wherever and it's fine. Um, and that's great. So if that's, you know, if you've got one of those, then send them to the closest, easiest, um, cheapest option. <laughs> <laughs> if you've got a child who, again, needs a little extra something, something, um, then we, you want to tease these elements apart a little bit more so than, um, than not. So um, that was the thing I wanted to, um, to start off with. And I'm just looking at some notes here. Um, so how do you know, somebody asked me, how do you know if your child is even ready for preschool? Um, and this is it's such a great question because the answer is, well, it depends. <laughs> um, you know, some uh, two-year-olds are ready to go to preschool. Some four-year-olds are still not ready to go to preschool. And so is your child ready? So here are the things you might wanna ask yourself about your child if you're deciding whether they are gonna be ready for preschool. And I should back up. Because it's, as, I, as I'm recording this, it's September, um, end of September. Why are we doing this now when the school year just started? Um, so here's the reason why. Oh, uh, preschools are starting to have their open houses. Preschool staff, uh, administrators, are thinking about next year now. They're starting to. Um, and so even though the school year just started, now is actually the time when um, people are planning for next year. And it's not to say that you need to like, hurry up, hurry up and get on a wait list. No, that's not it. Um, but it is the time when you can leisurely and in a relaxed manner, think about where, where is your kiddo gonna go next year, if they're gonna go. Um, or if you've made a selection and you're looking at the school that your child has just started and you think, oh, this might not be such a great fit. Um, starting now gives you so much time um, and like just allows you to, in a really relaxed way, make a decision that's gonna be um, good or better for your family. So that's why we're talking about this now. But so um, when, how do I know if my child is ready for preschool? Okay, um, you're gonna know because 
they are, um, it's not that they're bored, it's that, um, hey Avi, thanks for joining us, um, it's that they are completely, uh, how am I gonna say this, completely competent in the things that they do in their schedule. So for example, um, they can easily go to the park and hang with whatever situation is going on at the park. They can go to the library and hang with whatever situation is going on at the library. If there's a lot of people, they're cool with that. If there's no people, they're cool with that. If you have to change up the schedule a little bit one day um, and, and, and they're okay, they're not um, having an issue with that, the schedule changed and so no big deal, then that might be a toddler who, or a preschooler who's ready to go into a group care situation. Um, so you want your child to have had experiences, at least with you present, of being in a group setting. Um, someone who's been a very young toddler who has been at home with a single caregiver um, and not had much interaction with the outside world who then just like goes to preschool That's gonna be a rough transition and I'm not saying it's impossible And I'm not saying you shouldn't do it if that's what you have to do But it might be the kind of thing where things are just a little bit more difficult than they need to be So you want these signs of readiness like they want to be around other kids. They want to try um, integrating into a larger group setting um, and you see that mostly, at, I think of at the park and at the library, certainly like um, like a Gymboree type class, you would also see that um, uh, where, you know, these one hour experiences um, are successful. If those one hour experiences are, are successful, then it's possible that your child is going to be ready for, um, you know, a longer experience. Now, are we gonna go from a one hour class with a two year old to a six hour day, um, you know, in one fell swoop? Hopefully, hopefully not. Um, and we'll talk about two year olds in a second because um, they're sort of special. <laughs> but, um, you know, again, if that's what you have to do, then do that. Um, but the, the, the deal is preschool is a time to like start getting ready for school, right? Um, we're going to also talk about what that doesn't mean because I really do have a chip on my shoulder about um, preschools who um, go out of their way to be overly academic. Um, and so while we're on the subject, uh, somebody asked me, why do you have such a chip on your shoulder about academic preparation programs? Um, and it was a good question. <laughs> and here's why. Um, three-year-olds, and I think of three-year-olds as being like the middle of the preschool demographic, but let's say three, fours, and fives. Three, fours, and fives are learning with their bodies. They are learning with their senses. They are learning by doing. They are not learning by sitting and listening to somebody else impart knowledge. And, and so when I say academic, that's part of what I'm thinking of. Um, the other part is preschool age children are still learning um, how to interpret reality and they need to be playing. Playing is, and by play, what do we mean? We mean exploring, turning things over, seeing how they work um, because they don't know how things work. Um, so they're still like getting their little operating systems in place. Um, to be able to, uh, and I'm just checking over here for a second, to be able to, um, mean, we mean exploring, turning things over, seeing, uh, to, to figure out how reality is working. And the way that you figure out how reality is working, and that's learning, right, is by doing. It's not by sitting and listening, and it's certainly not by um, coloring in uh, worksheets. That's the other thing I think of when I think about um, academic programs is worksheets. If you, if you are at a school um, that is doing a lot of worksheets, and it's not that 
worksheets are bad in and of themselves, but over reliance on worksheets on 2D printed black and white, especially, but even in color 2D stuff. No, kids, preschool age kids, especially, but all kids need 3D. They need all of that stuff. Um, they need to touch it, smell it, feel it, put it in their mouths, probably roll it around and then figure out whether or not they like it. Um, or figure out something else to do with it. And so when I think of academic preschools and, and sort of academic programs or even pre-academic programs, I think of they're having the kids sit, they're having the kids write. Um, preschool age kids should not be attempting to write their names. And I'm, I might be causing waves if I say that, but um, developmentally, they're not ready. They're, what they are ready to do is like hold on to something, maybe a big fat paintbrush, and paint up and down the wall and get some more motor coordination that way. But sitting at a table and trying to write their name, particularly if they don't have an interest in doing so, is just, you're going to write your name for the rest of your life. You can start when you get to kindergarten, first grade even. Um, so... And that's not to say that if a, you know, if a child is, is interested in writing their name, that they shouldn't be doing that, that we should somehow present, prevent them from doing it. That's not the thing either. Um, but as a, like, a programmatic thing, should a preschool be, in, be like touting the fact that they teach all the kids to write their names? I don't care at all. They do not care. Um, I care that, uh, that the kids are dirty at the end of the day. Um, and so that's something else I wanted to talk about. Outside time, super, 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 super major important. You want to know how much outdoor time your kid is getting at school um, because it's just you cannot put a, um, a price on how good that is. Um, and so you really, really want to encourage outdoor time at school and make sure that they're spending at least 30 minutes outside. Um, Okay, I hope that explains why I'm so down on, on academic programs. Oh, this is the other thing I wanted to say. Um, your kiddo is gonna learn more from um, counting napkins to set the table. Your kid is gonna learn more about math from counting those napkins and knowing that six people sit here and four people sit there and oh, look at that, how many napkins in total did I get? Oh, 10, wow. Um, then by staring at a piece of paper, that has groups of six and four objects on it and having to draw lines or circles or color in the red. They're gonna learn way more from setting the table. And guess what? If they learn how to set the table at preschool, guess where they can also set the table? And this helps you, <laughs> uh, you the parent, because now you've got some skills going and you've got some chores going and you've got some growing happening and that came from school and they love it at school because it's super fun and you can count and you can do all of these things. And now um, you figured out how to integrate that at your house. So there's a double bonus there, yeah? Um, so, uh, so that's another thing. Okay, uh, another, let's talk about the twos because somebody asked me, should I send my two-year-old to preschool? Um, and my first response is usually no, they don't need to be there. Um, but we live in the real world with schedules and finances and um, people who work and all kinds of other things. But let me tell you why I say no, two-year-olds don't need to be in school. Um, developmentally, two-year-olds are still so much in their own bubble that they're not ready for the type of cooperative environment that is, is um, at preschool. They're not ready to deal with that many kids. And so um, a two-year-old who goes to a gymboree class, they're pretty much on their own agenda, right? They just kind of like tool around, they do what everybody else is doing, parallel play, right? Um, at preschool, the goal is really to um, take direction from somebody who's not your parent and learn how to deal with and be in proximity with uh, other kids. And twos are, while they might be ready to take direction from somebody who's not their parent, and some twos are and some twos aren't, 
um, they're not really ready to share space for a long period of time with other kids because those other kids just keep getting in their way. Um, so if you've ever been in a twos class, you'll see hopefully that they have multiple items of every toy. And why is that? Because twos can't share. Um, nor should they be expected to because developmentally they're not ready. Um, and that's why sending twos to school can be really challenging and problematic, especially then um, if you've got a two-year-old who's a little bit more sensitive, who's, who, who cries a little bit more easily, who needs a little bit more structure, a little bit more predictability in their routine. Sending a two-year-old, a sensitive two-year-old to preschool can really just not be fun for them. Um, and again, if it's not fun and it's not helping and they're super stressed out, then why are you going to do that? Let's not do that. Um, so twos don't need to be in school by and large. There are plenty of two-year-olds. My best friend's child was one of them uh, who were raring to go to school. They were like, as soon as they could, they wanted to be at school. Okay, send them. That's fine. It's, again, none of this is like um, do or don't. Know your child, right? Know what's going to fit your, for your child. Um, what if your child has um, either a diagnosed or a suspected special need, um, a, a developmental delay or disorder of some kind? Should you tell the preschool while you're applying? This is a sticky one. Um, I usually err on the side of sharing information because, and here's why. Um, when you, the parent, share information with the school, it shows that you know your child. It shows that you're aware of your child's strengths and that you're aware of your child's needs and that you are actively uh, partnering with people to make sure that those needs are strengthened and those strengths are recognized. And so um, I often counsel people um, who, kids who are on my caseload, their families when they're applying to preschool to be transparent, to submit um, reports, to have a conversation if they're nervous about just like submitting paperwork to, to call the school, invite a conversation about it. Um, what this also does, from the school's end is it signals to them that you're willing to be in dialogue with them about your child. Um, and so there's, there's two things that will happen here. One is they'll be uh, willing to come to you with um, observations that they have. And depending on how they respond to you giving them this information about your child, even before your child has gone to that school, you're gonna get some information about how comfortable they feel with children who um, are maybe a little bit more challenging, a little bit more complicated, a little bit more sensitive than the average bear. That's going to tell you a lot. Are they willing to work with you? Are they willing to work with your child? Are they giving you like, well, we don't know? Or are they saying, tell us what we need to know in order to make you and your family and your child feel welcome? Um, so you know, sharing information about a child who has, has some special needs or who maybe is just, you know, again, they're three and a half and you've waited or four and a half and you feel like they really do need to learn now how to be in a group environment, but you've got a sensitive one and you want the school to know that. Call them, invite the conversation, see what they're willing to put in place. Um, I always just find, you know, again, and I'm a communication professional, so fine, I'm always like, talk, 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 talk. Um, but open communication is most of the time I have been burned. So, um, and maybe you have too, but, uh, open communication is often, often the way to go. Um, so that is, um, something else. Checking my notes here. Ah, I love this. Okay. So I've got, um, a friend who came to me the other day and said, you know, all my friends are um, telling me about this preschool, but I, and I went and I didn't love it, but everybody swears it's the best. Um, and to that I say, 
if it's not the best for you and it's not the best for your kid, then guess what? It's not the best. Doesn't matter. Particularly with preschool because it's an optional exercise. Um, you get to decide. You get to decide where you feel comfortable and wherever you feel comfortable is probably where your child is gonna feel the most comfortable. If you decide, yes, this is the place for us, your, your child is probably gonna fall into line unless or until you get information otherwise. Um, and so it doesn't matter if it's the Harvard of preschools. If it's, you know, not everybody goes to Harvard, not everybody goes to that preschool, it's not right for some people. And that doesn't make it better either. So uh, back to my initial comment, it's, it's preschool. It's not that serious, except that it should be fun. And so if it's not gonna be fun, then do, you know, we need to make some changes. Okay, uh, I had another question. Um, I, and this one was, I feel like my child needs really strict discipline in order to behave. Um, you know, how can, I, how can I see if the school is enacting um, really strict discipline? And this is one where I would really encourage you to, um, number one, do some reading about um, discipline, sort of the new, the new disciplinary uh, discipline of toddlers um, and preschoolers because that strict authoritarian approach um, is, is being shown in the research over and over and over again to really um, not be effective, number one, um, at controlling behavior, particularly long-term, um, but also just um, not being um, shown to improve things. Um, and so, uh, you know, and there are lots of memes on Facebook and stuff, but I, I have seen, um, you know, why do we think it's okay to, um, to make a kid feel worse about something they already feel bad about? <laughs> um, so discipline at school, you should ask what the disciplinary policy at school is. Um, it should be a little flexible. Uh, it, should be, it should be clear and it should be predictable but it should be uh, developmentally appropriate and it should not be um, sort of a very strict authoritarian um, approach. Um, particularly, again, and it, you know, this, this um, parent probably has a child who's a little bit more sensitive, who's a little bit more, needs a little bit more correction than the average bear. Um, even there, a strict authoritarian approach is really just going to force the issue and force into this tug of war. And that is the last thing that anybody wants. That's the last thing that we want as parents um, to teach our kids that they have to like pull the rope um, and, and engage in that tug of war. And that's the last thing we want at school, which again is supposed to be about them understanding that learning from somebody else is fun. Right. Um, and being in group with people. So, um, a disciplinary policy that's clear but flexible um, and doesn't rely on like punitive measures. Like you don't want, you don't want to have time out at preschool. You really don't. Um, and if they use time out and your child like, yeah, I just think time out is so problematic actually. That you don't want you don't want time out of preschool. You want some other approach, um, and you want them to tell you what that is and see if it jives with your sort of view of your child. Is that going to work for your child? Um, so, I hope that this has been helpful. Um, I am. Uh, if you've got more questions, I'm happy to take those. Um, you can private message me. Um, here, I'm also on Instagram at SpeechKidsDC, and uh, I'd be happy to take your individual questions as well. I'll leave this video up for a couple of days, and um, get yourself to some open houses. Open houses are starting in October, and um, have fun with it. All right, until next time, take care. Bye-bye.